Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling is in... I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at the last batch of new things in Zimcat03. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We'll press on the cat and pop on over into what's new. Woohoo! So in our last bubbling, we took a look at effects. Go have a look at that if you haven't seen it. Yay! In a couple of the other bubblings, we looked at what was new in Zim in terms of the site, and we looked at the survey, and a few other uh, cool things, uh, general things that are new in Zim Cat 03. And then we've got things that were new in Zim Cat 02 here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so coming on back to this one, we are featuring the layout class. The layout class has already been featured, I suppose. Um, it's been around for quite some time, but we've made some new improvements to it, both in Zimcat 2 and here in Zimcat 3. Let's see if I can reduce this down. Uh, whoop, like so. We'll take a look at the code in behind there in just a moment. But the layout class is used on mobile. So there's a horizontal mobile. And then we can move to a vertical mobile layout if I can get enough room here. And there's a, a vertical layout where we've sort of done the swapping of that, where this is over top. So that's one new thing. We weren't able to swap layouts. We were able to swap pages that have layouts on them. But now we've made it easier to uh, swap the layouts. It was pri primarily the only issue really was any background colors. We had to get rid of the old background colors and, and bring them in. So in this example, we've got the swapping of layouts. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is, I don't know if you noticed this, but this is a basically it's a vertical layout. We've got a header, we've got content, and we've got a footer. So the overall layout is vertical, whether we're we're in horizontal or or vertical, or I guess you could call it portrait or landscape. It's still using a vertical layout, but we've also got a horizontal layout inside here that is expanding as we go horizontally. And that we added in the patches of Zimcat 2, the ability to use um, what, we, what we call a region. Uh, what we do is we set one of the containers, we, we set the content container as a region, and that region will keep the bounds. So here's what the bounds look like. Oh, uh, yeah, there's the bounds. So uh, this will keep the bounds of the, of the region and um, therefore we can use that to put, so this, this, uh, this one in here is another layout inside of uh, a region. And since the region is changing size now, uh, changing its bounds, we can scale to that region rather than scaling to the whole stage. So uh, we now have the ability to scale both vertically and horizontally, where previously the layout class was you chose an orientation, and that's the, that's the scaling that you got. Uh, you were able to put um, a you were able to put a different orientation layout inside, but it wouldn't scale. Now it does, and and that's pretty cool. So thank you. I can't remember, I think it was Alfred who mentioned that. Uh, one of our new members in, in Slack was uh, wondering how to do that. And so we took a look at it and figured it out. Uh, some of the work that was, that prompt or that, you know, that allowed us to know how to do that was we had already been doing that with containers or not containers, sorry, um, windows. So Zim window, if you put a window in here, that window keeps the, the bounds of the region and also wrapper. So wrapper and window and a combination of wrapper and window. But now we've formalized it. We've seen, we've taken that same type of code that we were using there. And we've said, if you set the container to a region, then it will it will do what the wrapper in the window were doing. It will it will it will change not scale the re region but change the 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 bounds of the region, and that's an important important difference. We've always been able to scale things inside of here, but we hadn't previously been able to. You see the background color on that, for instance. Um, 
as we go sideways, we couldn't handle that going sideways and uh, up and down <laughs> in this case. Woohoo! All right, well, blah, 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 blah. So we'll go in and take a look at the code of that. One last thing to do with the, the layout, though, is we also have margin auto. So anytime you use auto, for instance, a margin auto on this is pushing this to the left. Before we used to float the thing in the middle, now it gets pushed. So, and there's, a, to go along with that, there's a margin min. So as we approach here, you can see that we've hit a margin min right there, and it starts now to push the, the, the title. So there's the margin min, but we don't have to keep that margin. And that was a problem we had. If we set a margin, we had to keep it. Uh, we didn't have any way to sort of uh, do, do that auto margin. And that would also affect things. We could, we could do alignments, so you can align things in the center, align things in the left and right, but it was still missing in some cases. It also allows us to push a whole bunch of stuff from, from one side. So um, if you wanted a margin here, for instance, so we've got a margin here, it would then anchor the docks to this side no matter what you did. But now if we put an auto in here with a margin min, we can keep a margin min and our auto will push docks or push everything off to the left. So we could take all this stuff and, and align it on the left, but yet still keep a, a margin min there. So that was missing from the layout class. It was sort of like a final piece of the puzzle. Um, we seem to be able to do everything else with in terms of uh, placement. But that was um, that was one missing piece. So we've added that auto, it, and it's also now a constant, just like uh, vertical, horizontal. You can use it all capital letters auto, which evaluates to the string quote auto lowercase. So use either of those. Woohoo! Hey, now let's take a look at what's inside here. Ooh, we've got three things inside, and it's kind of cool, isn't it? That all that stuff still scales with it, and and so forth. Um, so uh, there's the initial one, which is here for the um, for the slider and the dial ticks. So let's talk about that. We've now added ticks, or not ticks. Ticks have always been there, but we've added labels to the ticks. So there you go. And maybe when we go into the code, we can see how that's done. It's just with a use a use label. Yay! And then we had a request to be able to animate, or not animate, but change the radius uh, for label on arc. So we can now change the radius dynamically afterwards on label on arc. And here we are animating the, the radius of label on arc. And we've got two ways that we handle it. We handle it with um, the radius spread. So radius spread is when it keeps the angle in a sense. Or maybe we had different way. I, I can't remember exactly. I think, yeah, radius spread true probably keeps the angle, and radius spread false probably keeps the spacing the same as it was before. So the, the, there the spacing is the same. And here it uh, it's not the same. It's keeping the angle of that the same. All right, so you can take a look at that. That might have some ramifications later, too, with uh, things like the radial menus. and me, uh, Radial and radial menu use label on arc, and we might be able to do some more things. What we're heading towards is multi-line text, uh, text on the um, radial menu. And we haven't done that yet, but maybe we'll get there. This was one step of the way. All right, and the last one was a request to be able to change the corner property of a rectangle dynamically after. We've always been able to change the rectangle's corner as we're making it, like we can decide on what to make that corner, but it had not been a property in Zim. So we've added that as a property in Zim, and here we are uh, changing that in an interval and animating it as well. Let's go in and see the code behind that. By the way, if you hit the docs there, it should pull up in the top here, the various objects and methods or whatever we were working with there. So that's featured items show up here. The way you get that, by the way, if you're in e-learning or any, or you know, you're teaching and stuff like that, you can say items equals, and if you say plural items there, then it will feature your, your um, items. If you only have one there, well, then I don't think it's items. It becomes item is layout. And what that does is it will open up into the layout 
uh, directly. Right? And you can read about that stuff that we added in the layouts down below in the various places. Okay. Alrighty. So let's drop that to the code then. Here it is, the Zim layout. We don't want to spend too long going through this. It's not an explorer. It's a bubbling and a bubbling of what's new. But I don't mind taking a quick peek. You might want to, if you're interested in mobile development and like the looks of what the layout is giving you there, it can be a little bit tricky to use. Uh, so you might want to, and also we've got a lot of examples out there that are older, like we started this back in Zim 1, I think, or maybe Zim Duo, but Zim 1. And our main pages example of going through different pages and different orientations with adaptive design and responsive design is, is quite old. Uh, so this is a pretty good example of how you can do it, but it's using um, a more modern, more, more modern zip. So we have our header, content, and nav. There are various containers, and we've given them type regions if we need them to scale other things within that. So in both cases, in the header and in the content, we're uh, nesting layouts inside there. And there's how you can say to those, uh, those containers to please change your bounds as the layout class changes you, change your bounds. And that way we can use them to scale the inside things. Um, we have a layout for that. So here's the layout where we're, so it's a new layout stage. The stage will be what we're using to, to scale. Oh no, I think scaling thing is, the stage is where it is. So this thing is on the stage. There's also a scaling object that can come later. And then here are the various region objects right here to specify things about the regions, including things like their margins and heights and alignments background colors. A uh, background color has been adjusted as well now as as you can see here we could have put this this is a background color right here for the whole of the the layout but we could have used uh, a gradient color, a bitmap color or a radial color for the colors within the regions as well which is new. So we couldn't do that before but now we can. And uh, there we go. One thing changed in here. This is now we've we've adjusted the parameters. So that's a break. If you look in the updates, we've got a break here. This is a new parameter called last margin min or last min margin. I can't remember which way. So this used to be the last margin. Each of these gets a margin. Margin top, margin top, margin top. And this is the last margin because you'll see that we're missing we're missing one. Uh, <laughs> we've got three regions, we've really got four margins, okay? On the outside of those three, or there's four ways to get, get margins. Uh, since we've now made it so that could be auto, um, or any of these can be auto, we need to also include a min uh, for the, the margin min. So here you would have margin min top, etc. And this is last margin min, I think or last min margin, <laughs> I'm not sure which way it goes. All right, in which case we've got a, a zero setting for that. And then we're into our other ones. I can't remember. Oh, that's a change as well. If we want to show bounds, we used to have to pass in a uh, graphic. As mentioned, layout's been around right from the beginning. At that time, we said, hey, pass in a CreateJS um, shape, not a graphic shape, pass in a create a shape, and that's the shape that we'll put this in. I don't, know, I don't know why exactly we did that. Why not just say build a shape for us? So here, here is us. I think we were, we were really caring about, uh, not that it really mattered, but we were caring about how many objects we made. We were, you know, we were careful back then. Now, now we've realized. <laughs> no, we're still, we're still careful. But potentially you could have passed, you could have made a shape and passed in that same shape for every layout. And that way, we're just drawing in that same shape. That was the idea behind it. Now we go, ah, it doesn't matter. It was just having a few shapes around. Plus, we're only using the layout for, um, for development. And we would turn those bounds off. We would get rid of this. We would say false here if we're, if we're for a final product, in which case multiple shapes aren't made. So anyway, we, for uh, ever since we began Zim, you know, six years ago, whatever it is, uh, we've been saying, ah, why do I have to make a new shape here? We just have to say new shape. Initially we have to make a new create.js.shape. 
uh, JS dot shape, but now when we got Zim shapes, new shape, but now we don't have to. We can just say true, please turn on the region bounds. Okay, that, that shows you your, your dashed lines. As you'll see here, we, we're starting with those, but we then go and turn those off down below. Uh, I'll show you that in a bit. All right, so here we are making a cat for the very top. So this is the cat in the top left, a label, uh, the docs, so uh, the cat icon, a label, and the docs. Note, we're adding these to header. Add to header, add to header, add to header. We don't care about positioning them because layout will position them. And then here's the positioning for the layouts right here. And we've got a margin manifesto. Margins and margin mins are always respected as a minimum number. But some margins will allow you to grow bigger. If the region sizes and margins are more than 100%, an error is given. So you can give sizes to regions and to margins. And if all those sizes in terms, those are percentages. So we're now talking percentages for everything. If all those sizes are bigger than 100%, it gives you an error saying, sorry, we can't, we can't handle this for you. So you just have to adjust your, your, um, your percentages. End margins anchor and middle margins grow evenly with extra space. So this is how the layout was set up. If you provide a margin, this is how we handled it. If you provide a margin, it will respect that. It won't get any smaller than that margin, but it may be bigger than that margin. The middle ones grow and the end ones anchor. Well, what if you want the middle ones to grow, but you know, go over to the left or something like that. Um, so that's where auto comes in. Auto can be set on any margin and will push as much as it can, including uh, evenly if you put two sides with uh, uh, auto. Just like in CSS or in HTML where you can center a div by setting their margins to auto on, on either side. So there you go. Here's the layout. We're uh, saying that this layout is happening inside of the header and we're giving it some margins and there's the margin left auto right there and a margin min left okay. and the last margin of two and that's how we've set the the top bit there so that is this along the top there they are there's our margins here's the margin auto pushing that Alrighty, um, then we have our feature section, so another container for the features. And feature one and feature two, so these are the different um, different containers right here. The different containers that hold the stuff for the dial and the slider. This one holds the, the arc and the label on the arc and the animation of the label on the arc. So there's a label, we're animating the radius. So the radius is now available for us to animate. Oh, we've got two labels on arcs. One, one was on the top, one was on the bottom, do you recall? There's the one on the top, and here's the one on the bottom, two labels on arcs that are operating there. And the third feature is the rectangle and we're on the on the interval we're changing the rectangles corner to random values in this rectangles case in the other rectangles case we were animating the corner property we have the about side so this is the right hand side that's giving us the text so here's the text on what we're saying there on each side the about is the container that will hold about one, but then we'll remove about one and change it with about two, change it with about three, same with up here. Feature three, feature two, feature one, those are all being held inside of features and we're toggling between those whenever we press something somewhere, a button somewhere. Is this the button? No, that's to the docs. So in here, where was the button to change? Oh, uh, that's in the nav. Yeah, so it was up here in the tabs. So right here, the nav, the tabs, and change. We call change content. So when we press on the tabs, and when those tabs change, we call change content. 
And change content is probably just down beneath these things. Here it is. Change content. So features.cache, we're caching whatever the feature is that sort of take a snapshot of it and then we're animating its alpha out. We're rewinding and on the rewind call, so as it animates to zero, when it rewinds, we get a rewind call, we uncache the feature. Uh, and what is that doing? Hmm. We uncache the feature, um, the next feature will come in. So this was a pretty cool system for swapping features. And so here's us swapping the features. We remove all of the children that are in features. We remove all of the children that are in about. And then depending on which nav was selected, we're going to add that selected feature. We're storing the feature in the about property right on the button. So where do we do that? nav.buttons about is this label. nav.buttons1 about is this label. And same with up in here as well. Feature3, nav.buttons feature. So ahead of time, we're storing which feature goes with which button in those tabs. We're storing which about goes with which button in the tabs so that we can easily say, well, whichever nav is selected, so that's the selected button in the tabs, it's feature we're going to add to features. So we do that, but because we do it after we cache these, so when we change the content, we cache the feature, we cache the about, that takes a snapshot of the current feature and the current about, then we remove it. What we're removing here is um, all of the children of the feature. It's not removing the feature itself. The feature is still sitting there cached. So this is really cool. This is a way that we can swap or, or fade in, fade out. What we're basically doing here is animating, fading in and fading out, and actually doing a kind of a custom scale animation there on that. You want to see it again? I'll just do a refresh. So ready, as I go to the next one, we cache and, and fade. As a matter of fact, well, if we slowed that down, you could see it a little bit better, but you can definitely see the animation of, of this part. That's the scale X animation that we're bringing in there, and a fading animation on the cached item. So note when we changed, I don't know if you, you can't tell it fades out so quickly, but as we change there to that, it, it's no longer animating as we're fading out. Um, as this one fades in though, it's, um, it's there animating because it's not cached. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. If you haven't really tried doing something like this yourself, uh, you would not realize that this is a nice efficient way of doing it. As a matter of fact, this is, quite similar to what we do in the pages object. We could have introduced the Zim pages object and handled those three pages with Zim pages, but we just quickly handled it in another matter. All right here, those are changing three different pages with um, transition type things. Okay, so down below here we have a layout manager. Uh, right, this is handling both our layout one and our layout two, and we're toggling that layout manager. Um, we, uh, I don't remember why, although it probably says why, oops, <laughs> it probably says why, I think I just collapsed, it probably says why in here as to why we added these two layouts and then later added a third layout right here, manager add layout three. Oh, this is us toggling. Yeah, okay, this is us toggling. Those two are there all the time. Um, Toggle the bounds up. So not toggling. Toggling was the wrong word. Uh, it's the right word, but wrong in this context. This toggling is toggling the bounds. We use the bounds key to, to toggle that. Normally, here we are saying, please just turn that off. So that turns off the, uh, the bounds keys on those. What I meant by toggling was the swapping of our horizontal and vertical layouts. So this is the adaptive design side of things. So we're going to be checking to see if the contents width is less than the contents height, then it's horizontal. And we're doing an adaptive thing here where every time we resize somewhere, we probably have an adapt right here. Yeah. So if the content is bigger than the, if the width now is bigger than the height, this is every, every time we resize, if we've changed that proportion, 
and we're not horizontal, then that means we want to change to horizontal. We want to adapt to horizontal. If else, if um, if it's less than, and we're and we are horizontal, then we want to change to vertical. Be careful; these two things, or these two things, are not the same. This is our check variable to determine whether or not we're horizontal, and we change that check variable inside here. So when it, if it is a type horizontal that we're adapting to, then we change our check variable to horizontal. We're using that to remember whether we're currently in horizontal or vertical. So if it changes to a horizontal and we're not horizontal, then change to horizontal. Otherwise, if we didn't remember which one we were in, if we just said, hey, is it horizontal? Uh, go ahead, change to adapt to horizontal. We would be updating this all the time. Every time it resizes, we're updating. We really only want to update if the orientation changes. So that's why we have to remember what the orientation is. And if, we're, if we've got the wrong one, if these two things don't match, then we change. If these two things don't match, then we change. All right, that's a little bit of check variable logic that you'll have to look through on your own. It's always difficult to explain that stuff. <laughs> you explain it perfectly, but it's hard to get into the head. <laughs> perfectly, maybe quickly. But anyway, there you go. Uh, if, you've, if you've done coding, much coding before, you probably run into things like this. Um, but that you, you don't want to be updating things when you don't need to. So make sure that you only update when you need to. And that's what's happening here when we change different orientations. We can always get the orientation. And by the way, we can, in Zim, get the orientation any time by asking for frame.orientation, I think it is. But um, that's not what we're, what we're looking for. We're not looking for the stages orientation. We're actually looking for the contents orientation in this guy, just because we wanted to. So when that content region changes from vertical to horizontal, that's when we're making the change. Nothing to do with uh, the, the, the window, the frame's window at the moment. We could have done it on that. So when the frame is in a portrait mode, automatically adjust based on that. Uh, it would have been quite simple. It's just replacing this with something like uh, frame.orientation, uh, I think. Anyway, uh, you can look into that under the frame frame in the docs. Okay. So that's our adapting. And what we're doing inside of adapting is adjusting the layout. So if the type is horizontal, then we're making a new layout. We've disposed any of the layout on our region three. So layout three is doing one of the regions there. We've disposed it. So if there is a layout three, we're saying get rid of it. And we're making it new again right here. Um, and if it's vertical, then we're making a new vertical. So this is us adjusting the region in, in the horizontal case. Uh, we get horizontal type things. We get min widths. In the vertical thing, we get vertical things, min heights. So the actual layout changes in the way that it works by a little bit. It looks like the margins and stuff, they're just different names, margin left, margin tops. Um, and various align alignments are uh, slightly adjusted. But unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. When you've got horizontal or vertical, we're using different things on them. So that's us swapping by disposing the old and making a new. And in that making, it, uh, it remakes that layout for us. And, and that's pretty cool. So we used to do how we had been doing this in the earlier responsive design, or sorry, I guess adaptive designs. Responsive is what the layout's giving us. Adaptive is when we're changing this layout. That's That's my definition of it. And I like it. You know, responsive is scaling something and wrapping something, uh, where adaptive is actually changing the design, perhaps putting this up here, taking something away completely, adaptive versus responsive. Uh, that's my easy definition on it. Some other people in the industry may have other definitions, but uh, here, by changing layouts, that's us doing adaptive design, and so we've got adapt. In the earlier Zim Pages example of adaptive design, we're changing whole pages that have different layouts on them. So we're, we're remaking the pages with different layouts. In this case, we're just swapping the layouts. So that might be a slightly better way to do it. It is a better way to do it 
if you've got a lot of things that are consistently here. So for instance, with what we're doing, we're keeping the same header and we're keeping the same footer. It's only changing in the middle. Previously, when we did adaptive design, we took this whole thing and uh, changed it so that this header part was on the left-hand side and um, this navigation was on the right-hand side, for instance. So we horizontally laid that out. Here, though, we're keeping a vertical layout for both horizontal and vertical portrait and landscape. Okay, but we're just swapping the insides. So we could swap the insides with pages still, but we're just showing you now how to swap it using the layouts. And by swap, I mean the orientation there. This looks good on mobile. So if we F12 here and go into our mobile, uh, and re yeah, there we go. Um, we have one, two, so there they are, um, and three. Uh, up and up and bottom, and we can swap this around with a like that, and there it is doing uh, the horizontal look of the same. Cool, huh? Or indeed, if um, if we had uh, regions like so, we can see that it swaps. And that has been a bubbling on layout, along with what's new on the inside of them. Woohoo! Cool, huh? Okay, so let's um, uh, let's take you to the bubbling screen. This has been a What's Bubbling with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and uh, hopefully you look back through all the other bubblings as well. There's all sorts of fun little things in ZimCat03, um, and uh, some big ones like effects as well. So have a great day. Come visit us and join us at zimjs.com slash slack or Jim, zimjs, <laughs> nothing to do with Jim, <laughs> no, that old Jim guy, uh, zimjs.com slash discord as well. If you're on discord, we'd love to see you there. I am Dr. Abstract. Ciao.